Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here, and welcome to another episode of the New Bike Build Series. If you're not familiar, this is where we're taking a brand new 2018 BMW S1000 RR that has the premium package, and uh, we're going to add a lot of custom parts to this motorcycle. At the end of the build series, we make it available to everyone viewing this video. Information on how you might win the motorcycle is in the description, but today's episode is all about braking. And so Zach is going to install some upgraded Brembo braking components onto the motorcycle and a Rizoma brake reservoir. Let's check it out. All right, Zach, what's up for, what are we doing today? Hey, what's going on, Ian? Hey, buddy. So today we're going to do brakes. Okay. We got a uh, complete brake system to upgrade for the S1000RR here. Um, it already comes with pretty good brakes, but yeah. we're going to make them better. I mean, if you're just a street rider, probably not something you really need to upgrade. Uh, the master cylinder will probably make a bigger difference than the calipers would themselves. Sure. Down the street, it'll give you a different feel. It'll give you a more consistent lever feel. Mm -hmm. That's what, uh, especially even on the track, that's what you're looking for. It's just that consistent breaking point that it's going to bite the same every time, so you trust it. Yeah. And you can start shedding lap times, you know? Okay. Uh, on the street, you probably notice more so brake pad changes, different types of brake pads, different mm -hmm. material. And like I said, the master cylinder more so than the calipers that we're going to put on. But these are going to look sweet, and okay. if it gets used on the track, it's going to be super consistent. Yep. Because uh, we're switching, it comes stock with uh, Brembo calipers. They're two piece and they're cast. Okay. So cast aluminum is fine. It's not as precise as machining out of CNC billet, which is what we're going to switch to. And I don't think it cools quite as well. Mm -hmm. And they can wind up twisting or distorting under extreme heat, which okay. we shouldn't have because we have our. We have our cooling installed, ducts, yeah. Which are supposed to help cool the brakes by, what's it say, 60 to, 60 to 70 degrees. So. Oh, wow. Uh, let's show what we're going to put on. We got a Brembo 19 RCS. So 19 means it's a 19 millimeter piston in here. Okay. And then this is a Corsa Corda, which gives us this adjustment here. We can go from race, which is going to be real bitey, mm -hmm. to sport which is a little bit less to, I don't remember what N is, neutral or something. Okay. And that's just your normal brake feel. So there's one adjustment. Then we can adjust our lever in and out. So there's another adjustment. And then we can adjust our pivot point from this distance being 18 millimeters or this distance being 20 millimeters, which also gives us either a real bitey brake or a more progressive brake. Oh, man. So that's nice. You have plenty of adjustment yeah. on your uh, brake master cylinder to get the exact braking point that you want so you have the exact lever feel. Okay. And you should have that lever feel lap after lap or traffic light after traffic light. Whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's going to be pretty cool. And then to match along with this, we're going to put on our Rizoma. We got a red. Beautiful. Master Beautiful. cylinder uh, reservoir. Yes, sir. We're going to use some clear tie down hosing mm -hmm. and we got a clutch lever with the Brembo lever. We're going to leave it at this length, but if you wanted to, TWM makes just a shorter end that you can bore, bolt on. And then you'd have a shorty style lever. Oh, cool. You can see it's shorter. And it's just right at this breakaway pivot point. So, so we're going to give that to the nice winner as simple. well so they could change it? Sure. We nice. want to do that, and then hopefully we'll have a package coming, and we can get all these fasteners in the gold titanium. Gold, is what yep. we're hoping for. I don't know how much, how many of them exist. We'll see. And then these are the real good-looking guys underneath here. From Moto Million. From Moto Million, my good buddy Manny. Thank they you so even much. come with a sticker here that you could stick on the caliper. There's not a great spot that it looks attractive, though. That would right. tell you the temperature. It's a temperature sticker. Wow. So you can monitor your braking temperature. Okay. Again, some, something more you'd probably want to just use on a closed course. Yeah. Where you're repeating the same thing. But, yeah, look at these. These are amazing. Those are, man, those are beautiful. That's why I selected them, is because they look great. You just spent a few minutes telling us about the technical features of them, but I like the way they look. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty expensive just for looks. Right. Ah. Uh, so basically how it goes is the cast ones are stock, like I said. Uh -huh. Then if you look at your HP4, yeah. it has cast ones still, but they're monoblock. Okay. So this is still a two-piece. You can see it's bolted together. Yeah. So the monoblock ones, these bolts aren't here. Okay. It's actually one piece. They cast it. So that's harder to twist. Sure. So there's still a point where this could move or twist mm -hmm. due to heat and forces and stuff. Um, so then this is would be an upgrade though because it's billet and then it's nickel plated which is what oh, you yeah. like Yes, and that is. nickel actually helps them with uh, the precision of their CNCing also 
And these are cool, they don't use any pins, nothing to hold the pads, and the pads just slide oh, in wow. and out yeah. through this groove. So you have very little resistance on your brake pad. You can see there's not a visible dust seal in here, so it's something that you probably have to keep up with maintenance on. Sure. But a dust seal creates resistance, and just like a fork, you want as much, as little stiction as possible. Okay. You want everything to be really free, and that's what gives you your good feel at the lever, so that's why they do it this way. Um, so then you'd have, beyond this, would be a billet one like this, but monoblock. Okay. And that's what you get on the HP4 race. Oh, yeah. And those are at another... Well, not another zero, but multiply these by ten or so. Which oh yeah, it's a bit much. Yeah, yeah. I think these you're looking at a thousand dollars or so for the set. Yeah, fourteen hundred. Where I those were I, from BMW, the HP4 race ones. I looked into it; they were four thousand a piece. Wow. Retail, so four thousand a piece times two. Yeah. Jeez, eight thousand dollars just for calipers on the HP4 race. Yeah. Those are supposed to be right from MotoGP. A lot of this technology, they say, is derived from MotoGP. Same with the master cylinder. Brembo is all about MotoGP and braking technology. Check out their website. I found it a little confusing. Maybe <laughs> okay. it's just me. No, if you found it confusing, everyone will. Uh, the other difference is, as you can see, this is a full-length brake pad, mm -hmm. which uh, the HP4 has, where the um, stock ones uses the four little single pads. Right. I, I couldn't really find anything that says what what the difference is, what's the positives and negatives of that. So if you know, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Yes, I'm sure someone will. Without doing any research, someone will have their <laughs> opinion as to why. Yeah, I, I just couldn't yeah. find anything. But yeah, so let's slip that back in. So these are going to look great, perform better. Yes. Let's see if we can make all this stuff play together nicely. Yes. That's what we're, while we're doing this, we're always going to have to be checking clearances, making sure mm -hmm. nothing's too tight, nothing's too loose. Because if something's constantly rubbing, it's going to get too hot and cause yes. problems. So. Well, you know, one of my goals too, Zach, from, from, from getting those uh, calipers was to make this bike just different from all the other S1000s yeah. on the street. And it so. definitely will. Mm -hmm. And then we, we already have the Brembo rotors installed. Yes. So we'll have a full, complete Brembo brake system. From the factory, it did have Brembo rotors, the Brembo calipers, but we have a Nissan-made master cylinder. We already have good stainless steel lines, Yes. which I believe we can rotate the end. I'm not 100% positive, but hopefully that won't even become an issue. It just will bolt right up. Okay. That would be the only thing that would be an issue with that. So to get started, we got to sump the brake system, so we're just going to open up our plastic reservoir here. cap off. When you're working with brake fluid, you always want to have a bottle of water nearby, spray bottle. Okay. And try to cover whatever, like we're going to throw a rag over this instrument cluster for sure. Because yes. if you get, even for a second, if you get brake fluid on this instrument cluster, it's going to stain it. Wow. And if you have a windshield on here, if it gets on the windshield, it stains it like right away. That's why we haven't put this front fairing back on yet. Because yes. it's just going to be a lot easier to work okay. with the uh, windshield out of the way. Because even if you're careful, you can see it drips, and you might just get a drip over there. The fan could blow this drip over to the instrument cluster, and that would suck. Yes. The rest of this stuff, if you get it on it and you spray water on it real fast, it shouldn't become an issue. Uh, I have. It's called a vacuum brake bleeder. It works. Not spectacular for bleeding the brakes per se, but it's great for emptying these reservoirs, for filling the system off with fluid. I still like bleeding by hand the best. Okay. It also works awesome for setting fork oil levels. You can just measure it out, put a piece of tape on it, and suck that amount of fluid out. So we'll suck that out there, and then we'll move down to the caliper that's farthest away. So that'd be the left one here. Hook up to this guy. This is what's called the bleed screw. We'll just open it up, and when you open it up, and I push the lever, you can see brake fluid come out. Yes. Right now, it doesn't matter if we get air in here. We're taking this whole brake system apart, so you can squeeze the lever a bunch of times to get the fluid out. I'm going to use the air pressure. Empty. 
The more we get out, the less of a mess we're going to make while we take these lines off. And just move over to the other side bleeder. And do the exact same thing. Yep, same thing. Uh, we got our brake system sumped, as they call it. There's no more fluid in it. The lever does nothing. Oh, no, what do you do? Um, right. <laughs> next up, we're going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to put a rag down here, and then we're going to take our banjo bolt fitting off. Okay. So to get a little shorter socket to try to get some clearance here. All right. Oh, yeah, that fits right in there. Break is free. Even though we sucked it all out, this is still going to drip brake fluid. You definitely want to wash your hands a lot or wear gloves. Okay. It's not good to leave on your skin. Okay. If you are doing this at home, you might want to take pictures, see how everything looked, where it was orientated, because you don't want any of this to get bound up, like run this brake line on the wrong side or something. Ooh, like yeah. So you definitely want to pay attention to how stuff was routed. All right. Stockmaster cylinder is removed. Awesome. On to the new. Yeah. Um, so this comes, it has a brake light switch on it. We don't need that, so we can just pop it off. Some motorcycles you'd need it. The BMW uses pressure sensors okay. in the ABS box to tell the brake light to come on, so we don't need that. And we can also remove this. It looks like it's just an Allen. Save some more weight. Yeah, right. Grams, right, of weight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. It seems tight. We'll just leave it on there. We won't save that way. Okay. I see it also turns with that thing, so maybe we have to leave it. It has multi-purposes. Okay. Well, let's see if this fits our handlebar. That'll be step number one. Yep. Nice. It fits? It fits. Oh, wow. And step number two, we'll fit this loosely. We need to see how our brake line is going to fit in the bottom here. And again... We're good. This this doesn't wow. get too kinked nice. up. We don't need to flip this or anything. Because you had some issues when you were doing my R1M, right? Yes. With the stuff. So like your R1M, both mm -hmm. of these mount on the bottom, so it's pretty easy. Yeah. Your factory R1M, I think, mounted on the side. So this brake line was set up to be like twisted like this. So yeah. I had to take it and twist it so it would fit wow. like that. Where in reality, you really should get a Galfer line or something. I know. The Galfer ones, for sure, you can hold this, and you can twist this fitting to any yes. angle you want. Yes. So that's a nice feature that they have. Or, uh, what's the other company? Spiegler. Spiegler okay. lines do that. Yeah. But that's outstanding that it fit on there nicely. Yeah, so that's good. We'll just snug this up. We'll find a good position for this once we get everything tight. Uh -huh. So, guys, we're going to leave links for the system that uh, Manny sent us from Moto Million so that if you want to do this to your S1000RR, you'll know, since we've already done the research, on what works best for the bike. Or you might just want to get a hold of me. Or get a hold of Zach. There you go. Or get a hold of Zach. Manny's probably better. So, most manufacturers also use a coarser thread banjo bolt than this one. Mm -hmm. This, we could actually use the stock one, and we might because I didn't like how long this one was. So that's nice. But again, on your Yamaha, so this is a one millimeter pitch thread. The other, the Japanese stock ones are usually 1.25. Okay. So it's coarser thread. So I wasn't able to use that bolt, so I had to source another bolt. Oh, wow. Or Manny had to source another bolt for me. Yeah. And then this one was kind of long, too. It comes with uh, thrush washers in the kit. You want to use them, replace those every time. And the other reason is the bolt that came in the kit, this is set up for if you had two brake lines coming right off your master cylinder. Some yes. companies like Suzuki, Yamaha, they constantly do that where the they're stacked right here. Okay. So that would work. But obviously, this won't work for this. It would leave a hole right. sticking up down below. So you can't use that. It also comes with like the world's nicest flathead screwdriver. Okay. This is really nice. Wow. Really 
precision there just yeah. to adjust that lever. Yeah, the winner of the bike's going to love that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if the shiny one. Before it was too long. I'm just curious. You shouldn't have to force this ever. You should be able to start it, screw it in by hand. So far, so good. Yeah. It was good before, but then it would just bottom out too early. And we look, yeah, we're good. That'll just snug up nicely. Oh, well, that's gorgeous. Yeah. This is a serious job that Zach's doing here today. That's why this video is going to be uh, pretty nice and long. So I hope you guys enjoy every moment of it. Snug just so that you feel the crush washers start to crush. See how at this angle where that brake line wound yeah. up though, it's hitting on the fork. So now we gotta move. I see it. that. Yep. Good call, Zach. Some mechanics will say the hell with that. Let the customer deal with the scrapes <laughs> or whatever it comes Or in. yeah, just the brake lever would be left high. Unbelievable. It's amazing what you definitely Unbelievable. see. You gotta watch one. It's all about routing and taking your time. Yes. Sometimes it takes way longer than it should, but it's always worth it. Unbelievable. That's what sets all you right. apart from the other guys. All right, so we got our lever set right in line with our brake lever guard. It's about the same angle as your clutch lever. Uh, again, that's all personal preference stuff. Some people like them higher, some like them lower. You can adjust it however you want. Okay. Uh, so now our next battle here is fitting the reservoir to the bike and making sure that we have the same hose size. So the Brembo master cylinders come with what a six millimeter adapter for the hose. Okay. Stock, it uses eight. So you definitely need a different piece of hose. Mm -hmm. And if you were trying to reuse your master cylinder, you really couldn't, you might be able to slide the smaller hose over it. It's really best. Brembo sells a master cylinder kit that has a six millimeter hose or get the Rizoma. And the Rizoma is nice because it gives you, if you remember from our previous videos, we get many options of the sizes. So you can see that's a six millimeter. This is an eight millimeter, okay. how much bigger it is. So if you're running stock, you need this one. We're going to use this one. Nice. So that works out pretty nice. This just gets pushed in here. And then we have to do our build the bracket again. Yep. Looks like it's in just as many pieces. to make sure that our master cylinder was going to clear it which as you can see it does no problem and i also had some time off camera to get the led headlights in so oh they look great review them. yep and uh so we look good to go so next step we're gonna insert that little fitting into the master cylinder reservoir and then connect our hose between the two all right so i cut the tygon hose you want it to be the perfect length so you don't have any kinks in it you can see we just have a nice arch yeah uh manny at moto million supplied us with these really nice clamps uh, supposedly you can find them at a hydraulic store. I haven't had any luck finding them local yet, mm -hmm. but these are great. This end I just safety wired because as you can see, I messed up. This fitting was super hard to get in the reservoir, so I sprayed a bunch of silicone on it, and I wanted to wash the silicone out. I thought this was real glass, so I used yeah. brake cleaner. It's not real glass, it's plastic. Ooh. So it has etched it and left this white film in here. Now it's not going to affect the brake system, but it's definitely not cosmetically appealing. So. We will have to get that replaced. So I just put a piece of safety wire up on this side because we're going to replace this reservoir. Yes, we are. But yeah, don't spray contact cleaner. No. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> yes. All right, so we've got our Brembo 19 RCS Corsa Corda master cylinder installed. We've got our reservoir installed with a little blemish mistake. Whoops. Yeah. We'll yeah. have that corrected. <laughs> yep. And uh, up next, we'll put the calipers on and we'll get the system blood out. But uh, we're going to do that next time. Yes. So for now, we're going to leave you with this. Uh, thanks for watching. Yep. Hope you learned something. Yep. And uh, hope you had a good time. And we'll catch everyone in the next video. Thanks, Zach, man. Appreciate it's it. to come along. It's looking great. I think. I agree, I man. Can't wait to see those calipers on there. Yeah, that's going to be epic. Stay tuned, guys, for that. All right. So I know this was a long video, but there's a lot involved. 
with uh, changing out this braking system. The sun's in my freaking eye. But yeah, stay tuned for the part two of this video coming real soon. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe. New videos are always uploaded to my channel. Stay tuned for more and thank you so much for your support of the new bike build series. We'll catch you next time.